So, uh, just as I say, starting with the top down, um, we have some important drivers that directly impact this area um, in, the, in the national economy. Asian growth, as everybody will have been hearing, has slowed down, but we're still talking about very, a very strong driver of the economy nationally and regionally. There's still considerable momentum. It's a very big pie, even though it's growing a bit slower. And then it's generating demand for the output of this region, both resources and agriculture. We also, as a stimulator for economic <coughs> growth, have had a low interest rate regime for some time. Now, nationally, the Reserve Bank is saying they're not seeing a lot of um, evidence yet of that flowing through, for example, to the housing sector. But in the Upper Hunter, uh, as we'll see, perhaps it's starting to happen a little earlier. On the other hand, we still have a very high Australian dollar. The terms of trade are not coming down uh, nearly as rapidly as the, the drop in commodity prices, and coal has been particularly affected by the drop in commodity prices. So we still have those drivers of structural change, the multi-speed economy, um, impacting particularly export exposed uh, and import competitive industries, so we're talking particularly areas of manufacturing and retail. And we're now in a period of fiscal consolidation, which means governments are cutting back on their public spending, uh, which has been a driver of, of growth since the global financial crisis. They, they're really pulling back on those levers, both state and federally. And we still have uncertainty overseas, which impacts uh, caution in the, in the business community. Now, the Reserve Bank um, reading of it currently is that the risks have reduced. There's a bit more uh, stability in Europe. At the moment, uh, the US has avoided the first uh, pass of the fiscal cliff, but it hasn't gone away. And I'm sure Craig will have more to say about those sorts of things. So how does that translate to the upper hunter? Well, all the evidence is that the, uh, the peak of investment has probably passed. It's still rolling through, though, uh, and I'll show you some figures about that in a moment. The, the, uh, the end of the boom does not mean an immediate turning off of the tap, but certainly things have slowed down. What that then uh, translates to is a le an easing of the very tight labour market up here. Um, but that can have some real benefits outside the resources sector to other parts of the economy that have really struggled to find labour. And we still have high incomes in this area which drive spending. There are some early signs of improvement in activity in the construction sector. Um, so all of those things are moderately positive. On the other hand, the, the pressures on manufacturing and retail have not any easier. We've heard um, around Christmas time that retail trade hasn't picked up all that much nationally and we would think that's probably true here as well. So not surprisingly there is some weakness in business and consumer confidence but as we'll see as we go through the detail there's still a good deal of robustness up here. I asked people this time over the last 12 months have any of a number of issues impacted you negatively in your local area. The results won't surprise anyone, but it just gives us, again, some data to uh, support what we know anecdotally. The biggies are traffic congestion and poor air quality. Over half the respondents that we talked to, over half the residents said, yes, those have impacted them negatively in the last 12 months. High noise levels, poor drinking water, it depends where you're living. Uh, and, but these, these are the two that are really uh, high profile. We also asked people uh, whether a number of uh, environmental issues had worried them in the last 12 months. And the uh, logically related answer is in terms of industrial emissions and wastes, yes, we know that's a very high profile issue. Um, and people are still concerned about climate change, not as directly perhaps, um, but some of the other impacts locally like uh, the concerned about biodiversity and what's happening to uh, bushland areas and so on. 
that's just a, another aspect. Uh, and I'm sorry that we don't have social and well-being indicators this time, but we'll try for some of those next time. So just to summarise, um, the reality is all those things have slowed down and times are a little tougher for certain, some sectors of the economy. The, the region here continues to outpace the rest of the hunter and the state in its rate of growth. And there is a reasonably positive medium term outlook. And importantly, the, the economic benefits that roll into the community are largely being shared. If you're outside of those, of course, it's, it's always tough and we are always concerned about those sectors of the economy. There is still strong global demand, demand for what the upper hunter produces, both resources and agriculture. Uh, and that's likely to continue if at a slower rate. And there are some possible benefits in the easing of the labour market for other sectors, particularly things like the construction of the Hunter Valley Coal Chain and all those houses that are being built. We are seeing some pick up in housing investment and uh, non-residential construction and that's likely to roll through for a while. So whilst business conditions are a bit softer and the outlook is more subdued, it's still pretty robust. And the same is true with consumers. Thank you.